I welcome all the participants for of our webinar on impact of COVID on co sector. As you guys are aware that under India reform plans to allow commercial coal mining have run to delays as the government focused on containing the COVID-19 pandemic more. This virus outbreak and the 25th to 14th April lockdown has shaken the coal market in low industrial activity is in low demand for power. In turn, leads to lower coal demand, further leading to low, uh, leading to recourse stockpiles at power station and pitheads. Apart from this, the coal sector has seen a 14% reduction since last year due to this pandemic. Uh, apart from this COVID-related problem, uh, sector is also seeing some conflicting issues like coal block auction, parameter efficiency and mine development, coal import, payment issue to Genco's, etc. Uh, under this umbrella webinar, we will come some suggestions that we will forward to Ministry of Coal and other related bodies for their reference review. Uh, now I request uh, Mr. U Kumarji for his opening remarks, please. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to compliment the association for uh, selecting this very important topic and very timely topic for the uh, discussion. I also welcome my fellow panelists, Mr. Dhagat, Mr. Veena Prakash. I've been mean, uh, seeing them after a long time, but uh, they, they look uh, fresher for the enforced rest. They, they look all the time fresh, but uh, they, they, they tell me the difference. Now this uh, pandemic, uh, COVID-19, I mean, the human, human civilization has faced such uh, pandemics across the history. I'm told the first one recorded is uh, dated uh, 3000 BC, when 30 million people died in China. Uh, lately, there have been Asian flu, when the Spanish flu, the HIV AIDS, and uh, there's one pandemic in which India counted a great deal. That was cholera in 1910. We have had world wars. They have been quite catastrophic. But then we also always had place to go away to. Now here, here is one pandemic which is uh, so different that you don't have any place to escape to. I mean, you go anywhere in the world and it's there. There is no vaccine, there is no treatment, and there is no escaping this. That way, it has been the greatest challenge to the human civilization. In a way, in fact, uh, nature has given this challenge to humanity. We claim to have mastered the space. We claim to have won the moon. We are going to Mars. Uh, we are doing so many remarkable things. But then nature has thrown a challenge. And uh, probably so far, we have proved to be unequal to this. Let's hope that our scientists, researchers, would make some breakthroughs and would show a way to the world to manage this uh, catastrophe. Coal industry has always uh, its own place, and that's why it was spared. Even when the lockdown was declared, coal mining was allowed to continue normally, and it has uh, established its uh, consistent tradition then in, in the month of March, coal industry has grown by 10.3 percent. I mean, uh, uh, coal India stocks have reached an unprecedented height of 75 million tons. Powerhouses are flush with uh, coal. They are carrying a stock of 45 million tons. The production is uh, continuing absolutely normal. In fact, at two sites, that uh, uh, I'm associated with in uh, SL mining. One site is uh, recording a growth of more than 15% compared to last year. Attendance has not had much of an adverse impact. It's only people who took who leave on account of holy because of suspension of bus service, train service, they could not come back. But the things have more or less remained normal. The problem is that the consumption is going down. And how long it can continue 
that will depend on when the economic activities pick up. And it's uh, very gratifying that this matter is engaging the attention of the government. Hopefully, some sort of relaxation will come in forth so that even major industries would be allowed to function at a reduced strength and gradually it will come back to normal. We will debate, we will discuss the relief measures which are required for the coal industry and other issues which the industry has to face head on and hopefully we'll be able to come out with recommendations which will be submitting to the government and uh, hopefully they will be addressed. So I think we'll uh, start with our chairman, Mr. Avina Prakash. I would like to request him to kindly address us on the issues those are slated for discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kumar Sahib. Uh, thank you for uh, really a nice uh, introduction. On behalf of SHM, I welcome uh, all the members who are attending this uh, webinar on the impact of uh, COVID on coal sector. And uh, considering this uh, this pandemic, uh, I really request all of you to remain safe, uh, considering that we are working in uh, essential commodity coal, which is much needed for supply of power, for generation of power. Uh, we all are working. Uh, uh, with all regulations being uh, set by the government to ensure that uh, we give the uninterrupted supply of coal to the power plant or if it is cooking coal then to the steel sector to continue the operations at uh, all the places. Now, uh, as uh, Yukumar ji has said that uh, uh, whether it is Coal India or any Capti miner which is working or MDOs which are working, they've really worked very hard in, in, in last uh, one month or so to ensure that there's an uninterrupted supplies of coal. Uh, that has also uh, posed a lot of challenges uh, to the industry also, because when you're working in this type of tough environment, uh, you're really going to have uh, the issues regarding uh, to the supply of uh, many items which comes on a cash and carry basis to, uh, to your uh, activities also. And in that sense, uh, we have, uh, we are hosting this webinar to get ideas of everyone who is there uh, in this webinar now to to collect all this uh, and uh, present it to the ministry from SOCM with an objective not only uh, to help the industry uh, in general but also to help the government of India to see that uh, they come out with a plan uh, which is not going to help only uh, the economy but it's also going to help the country to fight uh, against this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we have taken the four topics uh, in this webinar. One is the COVID relief to industries. Uh, though Ministry of Finance had uh, declared two uh, packages, one 3.75 lakh crores uh, uh, by RBI and the second 1.75 lakh crores by uh, Ministry of Finance to take care of the lower income group. I'm sure that they are going to come out very soon about uh, uh, another uh, uh, investment, another uh, plan for MSME also. Uh, we are also going to uh, see uh, some more things which are going to come in terms of the coal sector and the mining sector also. In fact, uh, Honorable Minister of Coal has declared some changes for to help the customers to ensure that they get uh, uh, the, the supply of coal. Uh, they have made some changes in their scheme also. Apart from that, uh, whatever ideas we have, we can all share our ideas uh, and we can uh, collect those, those ideas and uh, put it uh, to the relevant ministry. As far as the commercial mining is concerned, uh, this was a very uh, bright and a strong move taken by the government of India in the last few years. Uh, though we were hoping uh, it to get into the tendering stage, uh, the auction stage in the month of April. But with this lockdown, I'm sure that the priority uh, is going to get changed. And we are going to see some delay of in this commercial mining. Uh, but the way economy has taken a hit uh, in uh, because of this COVID-19, I'm sure that we should have some ideas as what we need to propose to the government of India to see that they uh, uh, put those things in in the paper of commercial mining 
to make sure that the commercial coal mining auction gets successful whenever it comes after the lockdown as far as the coal import is concerned uh, uh, coal india is having 75 million tons of coal lying at uh, their uh, uh, mine site uh, all the power plants are having coal uh, and uh, the power generation demand the power demand which has come down drastically is going to have an impact in, in, in the total uses of coal which actually is going to have an impact on the production of uh, uh, domestic mine also but it is also going to have an impact on import of coal so i believe that import is going to go there where uh, we have the requirement because of the quality or because of the logistics issues at uh, at the places where imports are happening like coastal belt of uh, the country as far as the auction and allocated coal mines are concerned uh, being mdo i must agree i, I agree that uh, this is going to be really hardship for all of us where not only uh, for our social uh, obligation we are maintaining uh, uh, the 100% payments to all the employees which are working uh, with us we are also ensuring that we work with extra extra precautions to ensure the supplies definitely we uh, should see some relaxation in in policies in taxes or in duties to be to be in position to maintain our cash flow the another challenge which we are going to face or which we are facing now itself is the delayed payment from discom to gencos and gencos to uh, mdo and if that's so uh, at the one side you have to make the payments to your contractors and to your labor to ensure that they get uh, a continuous uh, money as envisaged by the government of india to make sure that all the poor or all the persons who are below a, a poverty line uh, should not get affected but the other side you are not going to get the payment from the gencos which is going to create a cash issue for many uh, organization to uh, to start with and in that sense uh, uh, i'll be happy to hear uh, your ideas your views on uh, on on those and uh, we will be addressing that uh, uh, with an objective to see that SHM, shm should go with one voice of the industry not as one voice of an individual company uh, so we'll be trying to address that and we'll collate everything and uh, take it to uh, the to the ministry so this is what is from my side i'll be happy to address uh, all the questions which comes after uh, uh, the co-chairman of uh, the council kapil dagat addresses yeah kapil over to you good afternoon everybody uh, as you all uh, know this is an unprecedented situation which is looming over the entire world and everybody is suffering uh, if we talk about the in the context of india we were doing very well the economy was also doing very well and we were expecting that uh, everything will be uh, okay in the next uh, six months. Uh, there was investment, there was a lot of interest in many sectors, but because of this uh, pandemic, everything uh, has come to end standstill. Entire government and the infrastructure is busy in fighting this uh, coronavirus. And I think in the next uh, two to three months, everything will be streamlined. So uh, when this occurred and when it was declared, that the country will be in the lockdown from 25th. There was a dilemma and there was a lot of apprehension. How the coal will move to the customers? Because uh, many truck drivers, many uh, transporters, they went uh, out of the scene and it took about three to four days to convince these operators so that again the coal evacuation starts. That was also the time when Coal India was completing its target. So they did well. Uh, under the adverse condition and uh, at the end there was a 75 million ton of stock available but now there are so many challenges because in the global scenario the coal prices are coming down recently we have seen that the prices are something around uh, 54 dollars above for 6000 a cal coal international gas prices are also coming down so very big uh, challenge for the entire industry so we have to be very very competitive in that context, Ministry of Coal has taken many steps which are appreciated. So number one steps we have taken that uh, the date has been extended for the entire payments. So they have given sufficient time to all the customers for all the sectors, whether this is steel sector, power sector, payment sector, that they can pay their dues by a certain dates. Initially, they extended for 7th of April, then further it has been extended to 25th. 31st of April. The coal lifting dates have also been extended. So they have given enough time 
to lift your coal. And if it is not possible, they have again told that these dates will be further extended. And if we talk about the mode of transport, if somebody is facing difficulty in transport coal by road, he can change to the rail mode. Somebody is transporting by rail and is finding it difficult because he is not having any siding. It can be changed to road mode. So these mechanisms are there, but still there are certain issues with the premiums charged over change of the modes. So these uh, also, uh, these topics we can take it up with Ministry of Coal. We can take the representations and we can submit. It. The issue of uh, the bank guarantees. Ministry was very very kind that they are able to release the bank guarantees which are stuck up. And in connection with the bank guarantees, which are connected with the cancelled coal blocks, that issue has also been taken up in the Ministry of Coal, and they are finding ways how to return these BG. So that uh, BG uh, matters are lying in the court, but still they are finding it. Uh, they are finding the ways how to do it. The issue of the old compensation matters. In many cases, in captive mining, the compensations are, have not been paid. So they are also finding it uh, the way how it it should be done. The refund of old dues, the cold values, the EMDs, the uh, old dues, which are uh, quality based refunds, these are also have, they have been taken up by Ministry of Coal. And they have allowed certain very good things like you can uh, increase your lifting from various mines. Initially, there was a trigger level of 75%. Now they have lifted that, and you can uh, lift 100% of ACQ for power sector as well as non power sector. There was an issue of the payment to buy cash. There was a system earlier that you have to pay the coal value uh, by you, uh, making RTGS payments. So now they have implemented that you can pay your coal, value, coal values by using the USANS LC. And USANS LC has been implemented for the power sector as well as the non power sector. So the entire sector can take the advantage out of it. There was a performance incentive. If you uh, lift the coal beyond certain capacity, say more than 100% of ACQ, you are required to pay the performance incentive that has also been lifted. So very welcome step the Ministry of Coal have uh, taken up. Then there was the issue of uh, the premium over the notified selling price of coal, while the coal uh, is being offered under various auctions like exclusive auction and the spot auction. For non-regulated sector, it has been declared that there will not be any premium over the notified selling price of coal while fixing the reserve price it has been uh, taken off for the power sector when we offer coal for the special forward auction this is being taken up and i think uh, during our representations we can, we can take up uh, this issue and we can talk to ministry of coal to uh, wave off and to lift this uh, this kind of uh, premium as far as the domestic coal availability uh, there were many meetings, Ministry of Power, Ministry of Coal, they are quite considerate and they are also uh, forcing everybody to lift the domestic coal because we have got a huge stock available. The issues of the coal grades we are declared and it has been decided that many coal mines will be degraded so that the cost competitiveness is there. Because if the quality is not there, I think there will be a, a impact of about 10 to 12 pesa, which is very, very competitive because if the delta is there, which is very important when we decide up between the domestic coal as well as the imported coal. So if that is being uh, equated, so then we can uh, definitely go for the domestic coal, which, which will be cheaper. Regarding the, the fuel supply agreements, so there was a talk about the revision, and this issue can also be taken up because all the earlier fuel supply agreements are based on the G13 grade, but when we are getting to G13, G14, G17 grade, these FSAs are to be revised. So when countries are having sufficient coal and there is a less of demand uh, globally, this issue can also be taken up and all the old fuel supply agreements can be revised. There was one more effort which uh, we were talking with the Ministry of Coal and uh, some discussion has also happened in the last pile connectivity and in the first pile connectivity. Because to liquidate the stock which is having at the pithead, it's a very important thing that we should evacuate that particular coal. There was no connection between the mines and the railway siding. So Coal India started the action on the first mile connectivity. So that is to be taken by Coal India Limited. And if any customer is ready to uh, deploy a cross-country pipe conveyor or a ground conveyor, 
or any kind of any go round system that is to be done so these, these are the challenges if we do all these things then this particular coal 75 million ton and the further addition of coal production from coal india limited that can be easily evacuated of course this requires capital investment and i think after the completion of this uh, lifting of the lockdown period many actions in this direction will happen so as i have already told that this is a very challenging time and whenever the challenges have come whether this is after first world war or the second world war or any kind of other pandemic always the disruption of technology happens so there there will be a number of disruptive steps which will come and uh, we'll learn a lot with that thank you Uh, yeah. So, sir, uh, we should move Please. ahead uh, with the brief topics yeah. to be told for this webinar. Can you start with the first one, sir? Yes. And uh, really, messages? Yes, yes. Sir. The the topics to be covered under this uh, webinar. The first topic uh -huh. is COVID related to the industries. It sends right. uh, like uh, relief from mining taxes. Okay. And flexibility mm -hmm. in easing of coal block auction parameters. This is the first topic that okay. that open, open, open for the panelists, please. How you comments? Uh, so Mr. Dhrigat has uh, given quite a wide coverage about relief what has already been extended. Uh, more reliefs are needed on certain fronts. Like for example, uh, our most of the mechanized mine, mines are highly mechanized. A spare parts availability has become a problem. Because of the movement logistic problem, people are not allowed to travel. People are not allowed to carry things. I think some sort of uh, pass system, clearance system has got to be put in place. Like say, medicine carriers, food carriers are being permitted. Similarly, some sort of arrangement has to be made so the people who carry spare parts, they are allowed to reach the place. Second thing, Mr. Uh, uh, Dhagat very rightly said about the competition from the imported coal price, imported imported coal. The same is an established fact that by itself, Indian coal is the cheapest in the world at the pithead. What makes it very expensive is the transportation cost, particularly rail freight and heavy taxation rates. I think the, the way uh, relief is being extended on other fronts, uh, there is a substantial ground, sufficient ground to take a fresh look at the rationalization of the railway freight on coal. I, I do admit that uh, rail, I mean, the rail freight main income source is coal, but then if you load it so very heavily that uh, the coal industry dies, I think it will amount to killing the golden goose. So these uh, two aspects uh, should be uh, attracting the government's attention. And the uh, third point is uh, right now this is not being felt, but highly skilled people uh, are stranded. Those who went on leave, they're not being able to come back. Uh, in uh, cooperation with the coal companies, uh, some arrangements should be made so that they are allowed to come back to their duties. Because ultimately, you know, I mean, if a, a very vital section of the workforce is missing all the time, we can, we can manage for a while by putting them on extra job or more to, you know, extra time. But ultimately, it will hurt efficiency, and in the process, it will hurt safety as well. So this also deserves consideration from the angle of the coal producers. But uh, commercial mining, as uh, Mr. Prakash said, a very strong move is there, uh, and a lot of concessions uh, have been granted compared to the uh, auction system for uh, captive mines. Uh, a lot of angularities which are there, those have been addressed. But I think uh, there are a few issues which still deserve consideration. Like for this auction system, I mean, this uh, chawal dal that uh, I will charge 100 rupees. I'll give you 99 rupees and I'll give you 98 rupees. I mean, this uh, sounds silly and like an anachronism. When you are asking a person to decide in five minutes or half an hour or in one hour, 
the fate of the industry or the fate of the enterprise for 50 years is uh, very unfair and very unscientific as well. Auction has taken place right through the history. I mean, you get sealed bids, you find whatever bid is the perfect one, you go for it. Why shouldn't it be a Chawal Dal uh, auction? I can again understand auction for one of transactions, say 100 tons of steel I require. Now you come in the auction. Whatever has to happen, only gain loss, it will get decided at one time. But you cannot carry on losing, losing, losing for 50 years. So I think this uh, system uh, should be uh, given an immediate attention and to make it a little more scientific and uh, more rational. Uh, I'd, uh, ask, I'd request uh, Mr. Prakash to add to the other issues uh, like uh, and coal import, uh, whatever Mr. Dagger said, uh, he's the biggest importer uh, in the country. Uh, he's, he must have his views on this issue. Minister, over to you. Yes, in fact, uh, 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 with uh, the largest importer, I'm also now the larger uh, private yeah. miner also. So and, I, have and, to balance, and, I, have, I have to balance my views uh in either side i can't be Correct. either skewed to import or i have to be reasonable in both the cases but exactly. as well as uh, as well as this uh, uh you uh, the covid relief industry is concerned one thing which you were rightly saying that we are issuing the passes to uh, uh, to the medical and to the essential items uh, which are uh, the grocery items but we are still not discussing about the spare parts requirement of uh, the mines in fact, uh, for that, I have spoken uh, to Secretary Cole a few times, and on yeah. that, he had issued uh, some uh, clarifications to uh, uh, the Chief Secretary of various states also. Uh, okay. though, he had, though he had emphasized uh, to see that uh, all the local authorities extend uh, their support uh, to the industry, and uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to get a lot of support from the local administration. But there's a mm -hmm. need uh, to have it across the state because what is happening if you have a mine in Chhattisgarh, say in a Saguja area, you get a support in Saguja area because they know that a uh, lot of people are dependent on that. They know that a lot of money is going to get generated out of that uh, in terms of DMF, in terms of uh, CES and all. Uh, but the, the but the area from where your spare part are going to pass, they're not aware of all these things. So for that, uh, I'm sure that uh, if you put in a request to Ministry of Coal, they will be issuing some guidelines through. Ministry of Home Affairs uh, to yeah. uh, to all the state uh, chief secretaries and home secretaries uh, to incorporate uh, the spare parts and anything which is required to run a mine in uh, the essential items. Uh, as as you rightly said, that railway is really uh, making some time uh, uh, imp uh, a favorable position for imports to come in India because the, the though at the mine head uh, your coal is so cheap. But with the relief, it becomes cheaper. Uh, it becomes costlier. So uh, two things, which one in terms of relief to the industry, uh, railway should consider uh, to have some part payment of railways and giving the credit to the customers to make sure that uh, uh, they handle cash flow better and they are not getting payments from discount and uh, uh, from the industry uh, in, in the current scenario. And similarly, railway should see if they can rationalize some uh, numbers to make uh, this coal uh, comparably cheaper than uh, imported coal on a landed cost basis. Uh, we also need to see that how a PSU, uh, a block owner, can help uh, the MDO or uh, a Ministry of Coal can defer some of their payments of uh, the mines which had been allocated uh, to uh, give them a better cash flow to manage in the current scenario. Similarly, in imports, uh, uh, there has been a request from uh, uh, from coal minister uh, to all the chief secretaries, and now he had issued the uh, request letter to all CM of the states also to say, see that there is no imports. And in the in the current scenario, when you really want economy to get some support, uh, bringing down the imports to uh, to a lower number is a desire of every Indian, and that's so of mine also even though I, I have an interest in imports of coal. But definitely uh, the first first interest is of a national building and the first state interest is 
to see that as how a country's economy do well so um, on that only uh, our interest will be also to see as how we can support more uh, uh, the indian uh, uh, mine sector uh, and push it to see that uh, all the stock which is lying lying at coal india which is 25 million tons or at uh, the power plant should get used and we should not go for much of import coal until unless it is required for quality purpose at least for the commercial reason we should not go for import coal uh, for quality reason if you have to go then i think it's a call of an individual uh, user of coal uh, so these are the few points uh, in fact um, um, yeah i think we should invite uh, since we have big number of participants i was told mm -hmm. it is around 145 to 150 numbers I think we should invite them if uh, uh, Kumar ji, you and Kapil agree. Uh, yeah. We should invite yeah, them to uh, raise their points. Unless Mr. Daniel has something more to add, we could uh, invite the. No, I just want to, I just want to add that the government is taking the so many actions and they have allowed, mm -hmm. there was a director from the Ministry of Home. And again on 11th, they have allowed so many activities. There was also one issue of supplying of explosives because in, within the speed when there is a plant. To, they allowed the explosive movement within the state, but there was no intra-state movement. So with the intervention of the Ministry of Home, they have allowed the intra-state movement also. Now the explosives, explosives are also moving from one state to another state. So that has also been lifted. And there are many other activities which the Ministry of Home has, uh, uh, they have direct, given directions to the state governments. In fact, uh, just to add this to Kapil, uh... Uh, Ministry of Coal has also nominated one person. Uh, I got the detail. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll share with Jaydev for the purpose of sharing with every member. They've also declared some nominated persons with whom uh, any anyone who is facing issues in terms of running their mind can contact to get the help uh, of handling through the local administration. So mm -hmm. they, they have declared some joint secretary as the nominated person there. Uh, yeah, not officers. Yeah, there, there are some nodal persons. So. Uh, I'll share that paper with Jadev also, and he can share that with uh, all the person concerned for taking any help of of their uh, of their uh, particular areas. That's it. And so also, one more point I just want to add. I just want to add that the government of India is also identifying many other industries where the operation can be taken up uh, very safely with social distancing, and those uh, tasks will be started, I think, very soon. In the areas which are not uh, highly affected, away from the red zone areas. I think Kapil, we have to wait for Prime Minister to <laughs> say this tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. They have done in the case of coal mines also. You see, I mean, even for underground mines, they have permitted the underground mines to continue uh, with the delicate precaution of the social distancing. Uh, those yeah. which are like, this is totally manual and they have no choice. But the mechanized mines even underground, they are being operated. So, Jadev ji, I mean, if yes, we have uh, your permission, then we could request our guests to um, put their questions. Right, sir. Sir, in fact, uh, I have a question yeah. one uh, from uh, Lawson Tupro person to me. What is the status uh, of coal tax? Jadev ji, just one minute. Let him uh, introduce himself and the, yes, I think. the panelist to whom the question is being put. Sir, I think they have already uh, emailed us the postings. Okay, their okay, posts okay. are with me only. Uh, so there is one person from LNT here. Question: What is the status of coal index right now? As far as coal uh, index, right, sir. Then government so, are still working on this. So I'll I'll, I'll give a detail on that. Uh, there's a there's a call there's mm -hmm. an index called National Coal Index, uh, a draft mm -hmm. of which has been prepared and released by Minister of Coal some time back before this. Uh, uh, this lockdown happened i think it was in some some time in uh, january end of february mid and that was given uh, for the deliberation uh, to all the industry members and i think all the industry members had submitted their ideas and their views on that uh, to best of my knowledge they have not they have not reviewed that and uh, given the final decision yeah come on sir. Yes. kapil had uh, kapil had attended to this uh, he has given yeah, to the ministry probably kapil would yeah. like to elaborate on this yeah, I attended the stakeholder meet at uh, Delhi and Bombay. And after that, uh, all the recommendations and the suggestions uh, came to Ministry of Coal. Uh, but uh, the formulation of the national coal index was under process and they have not yet declared it. And I think only after the lockdown period, 
they will take some uh, decision on that. Okay. So that is the that's the answer, uh, Amitji. Let's go to the next question. So, sir, uh, next question is on uh, how COVID nineteen is going to impact the process of making auction core block to get optionized on time. Is government of India going to give some relaxation in terms of deadlines mentioned in efficiency parameter of CMPDA or provide in principle approval for ECFC? This is from Mr. Vikas Patnaik, head RM strategy Tata Steel. So the future auction or the auction which has already taken place. So it, it would be applicable on the on the auction which has already taken place because when you talk about the milestone penalty, it would uh, be of the block which is which are already auctioned. Any block which are likely to get auctioned will have a milestone penalty from the date of allotment only. So I think the question is uh, towards towards the block which are already allocated an auction. Uh, and, and the answer answer would be sir, this is a force major condition. Uh, Jade, this is a force yes, condition sir. which gets applicable on everyone. Yeah. Uh, they, they should notify Tata's mm -hmm. or any any member of Ashachim should notify uh, uh, notify this as a force major to Ministry of Coal and uh, any subsequent ministry where they have signed the agreement uh, with uh, as a force okay. major and this force major will be taken in account definitely uh, for the change of uh, the milestone uh, dates. And as I said, Chim, yeah. uh, we will also take this as a general uh, condition to be put into uh, to the ministry to ensure that all the agreements which they have signed either with the auction mines or located mines, they change uh, this milestone uh, dates. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. You. Right. Uh, right, sir. Uh, there's one more from the same company. The Indian steel company major uh, imports majority of required cooking coal through imports. Uh, so, Ministry of Coal should offer and divert cooking coal from power plant to steel companies that help steel industry. I think it is already mentioned in last Friday meeting with the Ministry of Coal and Ministry of Power. It's already already taken care of. So, okay. so sir, uh, there is some uh, question from some MSMEs, uh, Super Shakti Cement, sir. As most, uh, the question is, as most of the Indian coal is utilized by almost all small scale industries when 100% FDI is not allowed in core sector, how the consortium of small industries will stand in such tough price competitive auction model? Why not Ministry of Coal specify the available coal blocks for size of industries or commercial purposes? <laughs> I mean, this can the view can be taken only by the ministry, but the point is very small mines, very uh, high small developer production. And the shall they be sustainable? It has been established that uh, very small mines, they are neither productive, nor safe, nor prone to systematic operation. I mean, one can form consortia, which has been done in the past also. And uh, I think the mine should not be smaller than at least a million ton per annum. I mean, that's my personal view as a mine operator. Uh, I've seen the industry I'm going through various phases. So another point is logistics also. In, in fact, even if your uh, mine becomes viable and uh, commercially also, uh, commercially viable also, you still have to address the logistics issue. Uh, for 1 million ton, if the mine is not connected, nobody is going to put any connectivity to that uh, mine. So yeah. I think uh, people should see it more in terms of availability issue than actually mm -hmm. uh, having the ownership issue. And Correct. I'm sure the Ministry of Coal is taking care of this very well in terms of taking out all the mines which they have given uh, in their indicative list, uh, the mines which are going to be there for everyone to ensure that the availability is going to be there for all. Yeah. Right, sir. Uh, sir, sir Dave, one more questions from Dalimia Group on anything update on clean coal cess reduction, sir. Clean coal ash reduction. Clean coal cess reduction, sir. Cess reduction. Clean, clean coal? Cess, sir. Cess reduction. Cess, okay, cess. Okay. So is he talking about the compensation? Sir? Sir, there's no 
there's no clean coal cells uh, jede uh, just for information uh, yes, the question is wrong because uh, as such as of now there is no clean coal cells the only it's cells which is applicable only cells which is applicable on coal is a combustible cells which as per the definition of combustible cells is applicable only for 5 years from the date of inception and uh, i might be uh, uh, wrong in uh, the year uh, i think it is applicable till 2022 I think it got implemented in 17. If I'm not wrong, or 18. If it is 18, then 23. If it is 17, then 22. Because this compensation was to address uh, uh, the deficit of uh, states, and that's how this compensation was introduced for five years only, as per the gadget notification. Yes. So it, this was actually initially uh, clean energy cess. That is what the Ministry regime has used. It, it, it got diverted towards Ganga cleaning and then to GST, and yeah. I think it has uh, lost its uh, way and is going towards GST alone. So I just want to clarify one thing: if some uh, industry is exporting steel or any product to uh, outside India, then this uh, 400 rupees GST compensation stress is uh, refunded. So they can get a claim, and uh, this is set off. So this is the coal is being used for that project which is being exported. Yeah. If that coal is being used for that product which is being exported. It is to yeah, it is being the exported. Coal is not, whether it is yeah. cooking coal, whether this is imported cooking coal or domestic coal. So let's say that the power grid coal, high grade coal which is coming for coastal power stations, but it is used for power generation. That he will not get compensated, even though power yeah. is generated may be used for a specific purpose, which is yeah. exported, but he will not get it. Right. Okay, Manjee. Nothing, sir. That is all. That's all. Yes, sir. Good. Any any more question from it? any members who are there on uh, on the board actually? We can't see the list of the members. I mean, you could invite them. Whoever is attending. So that be it then. Uh, We request uh, Kapil to prepare the recommendations. Okay. And then we share among ourselves, and uh, ultimately we decide and give it the shape for being submitted to the ministry. Vinay ji. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, sir. And I request you, Kapil, uh, for your uh, for, for for your word of thanks, sir. Last word from you. Okay, sir. So, so very very kind of you. I mean. Uh, And first thing, I thank you and your colleagues for organizing this very timely topic and very well organized. And uh, Vinayji and Kapil, they are the pillars of our Sushya Mining Group. They are uh, in their own rights the pillars of coal industry also. Thank you very much for sparing your time and giving very keen insight into the problems that have come up and the problems that are. being faced the way they can be attended to and all those who have joined us from the industry for uh, the interest that they have shown and we do hope that we do would would prove to be equal <coughs> to their expectation in solving their problems and uh, highlighting their problems to the ministry and to the government in general thank you very much thank you thank you sir Thank you, sir. Thanks to all participants. Please, boy, join us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Vinay ji. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, thank you, Kapil. Thank you, Amit ji. Thank you, Kapil. Thank you, Kapil. Thank you, Jadev. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.